Wiener Burger, the world's largest brick manufacturing company and one of the foremost authorities in clay building material solutions. Wiener Burger has been producing Porotherm Smart Bricks in India since 2009 at their state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Kunigal, Karnataka. When it comes to brick manufacturing, the level of automation and R&D facilities makes Wiener Burger, India's factory, a one-of-a-kind production unit in Southeast Asia. Wiener Burger, India's flagship product, Porotherm Smart Bricks, has taken masonry construction to a whole new level. The scientifically designed bricks have perforations as an integral design element, transforming the clay bricks into something extraordinary. Under the smart bricks, we have four variants. Porotherm horizontally perforated clay bricks used as infill masonry for non-load bearing constructions. Porotherm vertically perforated clay bricks used for load bearing construction for up to ground plus three constructions. Porotherm thermo brick, which is a modified version of porotherm horizontally perforated clay bricks with special insulating material stuffed within its perforations, enhancing the thermal insulation capabilities of the brick. Porotherm VP tongue in groove, which comes along with dry fix system, the revolutionary dry mortar system, which can be used in place of the conventional sand cement mortar. Here, I'm going to discuss about the first of the brick categories in the Smart Bricks portfolio. Porotherm Horizontally Perforated Bricks or Porotherm HP. They are manufactured to suit various wall thicknesses as in 200 mm, 150 mm and 100 mm with length as 400 mm and height as 200 mm, similar to concrete block sizes. To facilitate faster and efficient wall construction, Porotherm HP half bricks are also available. The Porotherm HP are 60% lightweight compared to conventional walling materials, which not only helps in faster construction, but also reduces the dead load of the building substantially. A very important advantage, especially for high-rise building constructions. But from an end user's perspective or a house owner's perspective, the most important advantage that porotherm walls can give is thermal insulation, which in other words mean keeping your indoors considerably cooler during summer months and warmer during winters. Hence, the bricks are aptly named smart bricks ensuring comfortable and healthy living for generations. Because of the fact that Porotherm Smart Bricks are 100% natural and a green building rated product, thermal insulation thus obtained helps to reduce the overall energy consumption of the household by means of reduced electricity costs towards air conditioning, for example. Let us take a look at the construction practices while using Porotherm HP. Safety is always a priority. Hence, this is something we encourage at all construction sites, especially by wearing your safety gears. The Porotherm bricks are delivered in the form of strapped bundles, which needs to be manually unloaded by cutting open the straps and stacked at a leveled surface. Being light in weight, Porotherm HP is easy to carry and handle at the site. Course Planning The course should be planned by marking levels for openings in the walls and wall junctions. Then, markings have to be done on the pillar and floor slab for the first course of the bricks to be laid. Ensure that the floor is cleaned from dust and loose materials. Mortar ratio for Porotherm HP 
for 150 or 200 mm thick wall, use 1 is to 6 ratio. For 100 mm thick wall, use 1 is to 4 ratio. For 100 mm thick walls, RCC stiffener bands are to be provided after every 5 courses of porotherm bricks. The first course should be done with extra care. The first course is laid on a level mortar bed. The thickness of the mortar bed should be such as to avoid cutting of bricks in the courses above. Ensure that the mortar layer is stiff enough to avoid sinking of the bricks. Always start the masonry from the column face. Check the accuracy with respect to plumb and level by the help of a level tube. Then align vertically and horizontally by using a plumb bob and a line dory. To ensure correct alignment and straightness, a line dory is tiled along the length of the proposed wall. For proper bonding of the bricks and mortar, ensure to pre-wet the bricks. If the bricks need to be cut, use a wet cutting machine or a stone or granite cutter. Mark the positions of the cut on four sides of the brick with the help of a measuring tape and then use a wet cutting machine to make the cut on the brick. Further, to break the brick apart, use a chisel on the flat, thick band on the surface of the brick which will cut the brick into desired sizes. Smearing open voids In any kinds of openings on wall junctions, the open perforations or voids which are exposed need to be smeared with mortar during wall construction itself. Window fixation and sill laying To properly fix a window, it is necessary to provide at least a 50 mm thick PCC sill. There are two methods of fixing the window. One, by using hold fast. Mark the positions of the hold fast on the wall, then chase the wall along the marking using a cutting machine. Ensure to keep openings for the hold fast to be fixed at desired locations. Now, fix the window. Prefixed with the hold fast into the open void and fill with concrete. Two, by using plastic sleeve anchors. While constructing the wall at the door or window location, each course in alternate course should be a half brick. Invert this half brick 90 degree vertical. During the window fixing, fix it using plastic sleeve anchor. Insert the plastic sleeve onto the hole and hammer it. Then, insert a screw in the inserted sleeve with the help of a screw drill. Conduiting process Mark the positions of the conduits on the wall. Chase the wall along the marking using a single or double-bladed cutting machine. Chisel the chased portion manually using a chisel and hammer. Finally, fix the electric conduits and plumbing lines into the chases. The switch box conduit on the wall should be filled with mortar and the switch box has to be then pressed into the mortar bed and aligned vertically and horizontally with the wall. The switch box should project out of the wall to flush with the finished wall surface. Load fixations Let us have a look at the load fixation procedures for porotherm walls for various types of fixtures to be fixed. Light loads typically include fixtures like wall mirror, photo frame, towel hanger, etc. Medium loads include split air conditioners, geysers, kitchen cabinets, 
book racks, etc. While heavy loads include items like EWC, wash basins, fixed to the wall or wall wardrobes. Light Load Fixations Drill a 10 mm diameter hole with a drilling machine on the wall. Ensure the machine is on rotary mode only. Insert a 100 mm long wooden peg ensuring that it goes through outer shell and immediate web of the brick inside. Hammer a nail or screw in the center of the wooden peg. Medium Load Fixations Use a plastic sleeve anchor of appropriate size. Drill a hole of appropriate diameter as per the anchor diameter. Ensure the machine is on rotary mode only. Insert a plastic or polyamide sleeve. Drive in the anchor screw by rotation with a drilling machine and not hammering. Fix the load in position. Heavy load fixations. Make a hole on the porotherm wall by a drilling machine or chisel hammer. Stuff the hole completely by concrete mortar. Insert the rack bolt firmly inside the filled hole. Let it set for 24 hours without disturbing the position of the rack bolt. Hang the load post 24 hours firmly to the rack bolt. Then tighten the nut of the rack bolt. Post wall construction. The walls have to be plastered. Before plastering, chicken mesh is required to be placed at the junction of RCC and the brick, since the mesh acts as a micro reinforcement preventing cracks. Plastering should be done with splatter dash and two coats. Splatter dash should be done onto a slightly wet masonry wall in a thin liquid coat to form a layer of uniform suction properties for better adhesion of the plaster. After a minimum curing of one day, the second coat of plaster should be applied and the plastering should be a minimum thickness of 10 mm. I came to know about Poratham blocks through an architect. I started using these blocks in one of the projects. After using these blocks, I find these blocks have got uniformity in its strength and size. At the end of the day, the output of the work in my masonry is much higher compared to the conventional blocks. This product is of bigger size. The consumption of the mortar is much less compared to the regular bricks available. Since it is a clay material, the temperature within the room or the house is much lesser and gives a good living atmosphere within the house which is what I am interested in. and at the end of the day I am giving a good product to my clients.